It's Wes. Today we're going to be talking about the RF 16 millimeter lens. A little, a little, a little lens to which I did not give a chance. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first one to tell you. My name is Wes. I'm a freelance photographer here in Southern California. I ordered the RF 16 millimeter lens right when it came out. It was pretty attractive with that price being $299. And um, it, so focal length I was very much interested in because I like to uh, shoot video and that's uh, good for a wide YouTube video setup. Also on the street capturing video, it's a nice wide angle. You get a lot of context. I had a very, very good experience with the RF 15 to 35. Amazing, amazing lens. I sold it. Uh, it's, it's a very expensive lens and I use the money for other things, but I was interested to see whether this 16 millimeter lens could hold its own. And so when I first put it on, a um, couple things turned me off. One, I felt like the wobble anytime I videoed was just atrocious. It was really, really off-putting. And two, I didn't feel like the shots were as sharp as I wanted. Now, I've looked back through my Lightroom catalog I didn't take a lot of shots with this when I look back and see my um, early shots in November when I ordered this. But this week I've used it twice and I'm gonna tell you why. These two experiences changed how I feel about this lens. Now, I'm not selling this lens to you based on video. Uh, jury's still out on that. But my last video I did film with it so you can check that up here. I'm talking about photography and so I went out on a walking uh, ghost tour of downtown Fullerton. I had this lens, the 35 and RF 30, uh, 85 from Viltrox. And more often than not, I found myself putting this lens on uh, when we were in a couple of indoor parts of the tour in small uh, places in a house that was supposedly haunted, a restaurant that was supposedly haunted. I found myself reaching for this lens. Now, there were a couple other things that impressed me about this is speed and accuracy of the autofocus in combination with the Canon R5. I found that I had no cause to worry. This always got the shot and the pictures were super sharp. Now, I heard originally when this came out, there was no lens profile in Adobe Lightroom that's since been updated. So the uh, software will then adapt for curvature that happens at the extreme angles, extreme corners. I found this lens to be sharp I found a, the autofocus to work well, and on the walking ghost tour, I found that it captured environments that I could not get otherwise. So that's the focal length, but remember the sharpness, the accuracy of focus matters as well. Now, the second thing I did uh, this week with this lens is we went on a photo walk. Um, I actually taught a class um, on street photography, and we went uh, with California Center for Digital Arts down to Venice Beach. And one of the first things that happened is we walked onto the bike path and we kind of stepped to the side. Um, so we were facing the, the horizon, the ocean, and these bikes were coming back and forth. And it would have been a cool shot to be able to get the bike path, the bike, the sand, and the horizon, but I couldn't do it with any other lens. So I put this one on the camera and it made all the difference. I shifted into high-speed continuous uh, shutter and our high speed continuous drive mode and just rattled off the shots and it grabbed all the bikes passing through the frame, all the pedestrians passing through the frame. And I found that the results were great. Now, a lot of that has to do with timing, composition, but there were enough shots in there that really, really hooked me on this lens. I'm gonna put up a few of those and share those with you. So out while we were walking on uh, the Venice boardwalk or bike path, we saw a volleyball game and I decided to ask the players if we could shoot. Hello. Would you mind if we took photos while you played? We're, a, uh, we're just on a photo walk or a photography class. And so sure enough, they let us and we went out and I found this lens captured the most amazing angles and it was sharp and it was tack sharp on the focus. Uh, and so those two experiences sold me on this lens. For the money, you cannot be, uh, beat it. I think it should be a part of your kit if you're shooting the R, the RP, the R5, the R6. It comes in handy and, and it's small. I had, uh, I had this bag, the Peak Design, which uh, is the six liter. I'm not totally a fan of it, but I had this lens, the RF35, and I had, and I also had the Viltrox RF85 in here. 
And because of the size of this lens, I had that on the body most of the time. I could easily slip it in and out of the case. Most of the time, I just walked with the camera and the hand strap. But this little, light, amazing lens deserves to be looked at again. And shame on me, I kind of wrote it off. I, I made a couple of comments online that, eh, I'm not sold on it, but give it time. Put it in some cramped quarters where you can only get the shot with this focal length. It will be sharp. You'll find the, the focus will um, be sharp and right on. And it does high speed uh, grabs, uh, captures so well. Uh, really impressed with this, really impressed. So uh, yeah, it's a keeper. RF 16 mil. Now it doesn't replace the RF 15 to 35, but my next step is astrophotography with this. I can't wait to go out there and see how well this uh, captures stars. All right, till the next video, subscribe if you're into this kind of content. I make photography tutorials and camera gear reviews. I'll see you in the next video.